The Catholic community of Sacred Heart welcomes you to this celebration of the Eucharist on this, the third Sunday of Easter. We encourage you to get yourself settled in a very comfortable place and make yourself uh, open to the presence of God coming to us in this time. In the gospel today, we are going to hear the story of Jesus ministering to his disciples as he baked fish on the beach for them. In our silence for a moment, let us prepare our hearts that the Lord might minister to us in this celebration. And together we celebrate the Eucharist of our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Well, hello to all of you at home. We are delighted to be with you to pray this third Sunday of Easter. We are the 12 apostles of Pantagorda who faithfully convene together to pray this Mass for you and with you. So as we prepare ourselves, we are reminded of our sinfulness by the liturgy of the church, by our need of God, by getting in touch with where we actually need his grace the most. Let's take just a moment and reflect on that. And together we pray, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Oh 
Let us pray. May your people exalt forever, God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the captain and the court officers had brought the apostles in and made them stand before the Sanhedrin, the high priest questioned them. We gave you strict orders, did we not, to stop teaching in that name? Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and want to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles said in reply, we must obey God rather than men. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus, though you had him killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to grant Israel repentance and forgiveness of sins. We are witnesses of these things, as is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to all those who obey him. The Sanhedrin ordered the apostles to stop speaking in the name of Jesus and dismissed them. So they left the presence of the Sanhedrin rejoicing that they had been found worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Give thanks 
to his holy name. For his anger lasts but a moment, a lifetime is goodwill. At nightfall, weeping enters in, but with the dawn rejoicing. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, looked and heard the voices of many angels who surrounded the throne and the living creatures and the elders. They were countless in numbers and they cried out in a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches wisdom and strength, honor and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea, everything in the universe cry out to the one who sits on the throne and to the lamb, be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. The four living creatures answered, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshiped. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus revealed himself again to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. He revealed himself in this way. Together were Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, Zebedee's sons, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. And they said to him, we also will come with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. When it was already dawn, Jesus was standing on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, have you caught anything to eat? They answered, no. So he said to them, cast the net over the right side of the boat and you will find something. So they cast it and then were not able to pull it in because of the great number of fish. So the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he tucked in his garment for he was lightly clad and jumped into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, for they were not far from shore, only about a hundred yards, dragging the net with the fish. When they climbed out on shore, they saw a charcoal fire with fish on it and bread. 
Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you just caught. So Simon Peter went over and dragged the net ashore full of 153 large fish. Even though there were so many, the net was not torn. And Jesus said to them, Come, have breakfast. And none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they realized it was the Lord. Jesus came over and took the bread and gave it to them, and in like manner the fish. This was now the third time Jesus was revealed to his disciples after being raised from the dead. When they had finished their breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. He then said to Simon Peter a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. Jesus said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that Jesus had said to him a third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Amen, amen, I say to you, when you were younger, you used to dress yourself and go where you wanted. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. He said this signifying by what kind of death Peter would glorify God. And when he had said this, he said to him, follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord. Lord. Oh, dear friends, this is the famous breakfast on the beach with Jesus scenario in the gospel today. And it is by far one of my favorite gospel passages of all time. First of all, the meaning of this brings home this fact about our relationship with God. It is as unique as a snowflake. It really is. Yes, there is one Lord, and we all share the grace of the one Lord. And yet, our relationship is unique with him as is your thumbprint. He so tailors his love relationship with us that he meets us exactly where we are, in the place we are, all the time, in fact, we have no other way to come to him but as we are. And this is how he always manifests himself in the here and the now in exactly the place we need him. And he's ingenious. He knows us so well to the point that even the number of hairs on the head are counted. He knows every single nook and cranny of us, inside and out. And Peter, Simon Peter, Simon son of John, always represents you in the scripture, and me, of course. And his relationship with the Lord is a paradigm of what our love relationship with God is like. Notice these key features. Number one, God always takes the initiative with you, always. He says uh, elsewhere, you didn't choose me, I chose you. So he comes after us by various means. How did he come after Simon Peter? He showed up one day in Galilee, and uh, he knows Peter very, very well already. Or I should say Simon's son of John, because Jesus hasn't given him his new name yet. And uh, here come these fishermen, and he takes a bead 
on Simon, son of John. So, nothing to show for your labors all night long fishing? Ah, we haven't caught anything. He knows the financial distress Peter is, Simon, son of John, is under. He knows everything about him, and he says, put your boat offshore a bit into the deeper water and lower your nets for a catch. And you remember the story. He says, ah, uh, oh, we haven't caught a thing all night, but if you say so, okay. And then, of course, the incredible, miraculous catch. The fish are literally jumping into the net. They have trouble hauling it ashore to the point where the nets are breaking and hauling it onto the boat first. And then, of course, this is a big, big harvest of fish. So financial worries are over for the time being. And Peter, Simon, son of John, and the Lord exchange glances, just like a love story. The glance, the look. Peter looks at Jesus who's looking at him and says, Depart from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. Now, as we progress along in the life of Peter, you will notice that he is sometimes incredibly fragile as now and at other times rather grandiose. So as we move forward throughout Peter's ongoing developing relationship with the Lord, on and on, it comes now to the time of the Paschal mystery. And Jesus has been saying over and over, I'm going to be handed over, I'm going to be killed, and then the Son of Man will rise on the third day. And of course, uh, Peter is resisting this truth all the time. But at the Last Supper... I'll never abandon you, Lord. I'll go with you wherever. I'll defend you. I'll stick up for you. I'll be at your side. And Peter looks, uh, Jesus looks at him again and says, Oh, really? Before the cock crows in the morning, you will have denied me three times. I'll never deny you. Jesus knows full well Peter's fragility. And then, of course, we know that's exactly what happened. And when Peter hears that rooster crow, he begins to weep bitterly, recalling the Lord's prophesy, prophecy. So now here it is the third time Jesus comes, risen from the dead, and imagine this scenario where, once again, same condition in the beginning, isn't it? They fished all night, have caught nothing, and here is this lone figure on the beach with a little charcoal fire, and the beloved disciple recognizes him first. It is the Lord. Peter then, brash as usual, jumps into the water, comes leaping onto the shore, probably grasping Christ in his arms, and Jesus sits down and calmly serves them breakfast. Here's some bread, here's some nice roast fish, and then after they have this nice kind of chummy meeting, Jesus then turns to Simon, son of John. Simon, son of John, do you love me? Now, we must pause here for the most poignant meaning of this exchange. You know, somebody told me that Eskimos have 99 words for snow because it's very important to them. Of course, they live among snow, 24-7 snow, so they have 99 words describing various moments and aspects of their life with snow. And unfortunately, we have only one word for love, but at least in the Greek in which the scriptures are written, there are four words for love. And uh, C.S. Lewis wrote a marvelous book on it called The Four Loves. And they are storge, which means affection, kind of like puppies together, if you will. Mother at the breast, the sewing machine, the domesticity of being comfortable around a hearth together, that kind of thing. 
And then there is philia. Philia is friendship. In the Greek ideal, it's rather serious. A friendship is uh, usually a lifelong bonding that is uh, very beautiful and prized. Philia. And then there is eros, and that's romantic love, and the love that brings forth children into the world, a fiery, burning, human, passionate, romantic love. And finally, there's agape. Agape is divine love. It's the love of Christ. There is no self in agape. It is completely selfless. There's no ego there. This divine love is truly heavenly. And when Peter have, is having this exchange with the Lord, Simon, son of John, do you love me? The word is agape. Ha, ah, the divine love, the selfless love. And Peter says, Lord, you know that I, philia is the word he uses, the word for friendship, not divine love. Jesus asks him a second time, Simon, son, son of John, do you love me? Notice that Peter has recently denied him three times, and now it's a threefold attestation of his love to redeem Simon, son of John, from this great burden that he would otherwise carry. Ah, the tenderness of the Lord with each one of us. But notice the second one. He says, Peter, or Simon, son of John, do you agape me? And Simon answers again, Lord, you know that I, philia is the word he uses, the friendship love. And Jesus keeps giving him then more and more responsibility. First, tend my sheep, now feed my sheep. So then the third time, Jesus asks him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? But Jesus meets him at his level. And the word Jesus uses is philia, friendship. Peter is now hurt that Jesus had to ask a third time and that he stepped down now to meet Peter where he's at, what he's capable of at this point in the journey. And Jesus hears Peter break down, say, Lord, you know everything. You know well that I, philia, is the word he uses, love you. And at that point, Jesus gives him everything he's, he has, He's restored to his name Peter, meaning the rock. He now will have the primacy in the kingdom of God. He will become the first vicar of Christ on earth. And notice, he meets him where he is, just like he meets you, just like he meets me. There's one last little gloss that I learned about in Rome where Peter was crucified and asked to be crucified then upside down because he was not worthy to be crucified in the same manner as was his Lord. That's agape. He got there, and we will too. But notice Jesus ended this scenario with these two words, follow me. So when Peter is now the Pope, he's in Rome, the persecutions were so intense that the Christians were being slaughtered left and right and in the most brutal and the cruelest of ways, thrown to lions, boiled in oil, tortured, made sport of, and for fear that he wouldn't be around to continue to lead and guide the church, Peter was fleeing the city when allegedly, according to tradition, the Lord appeared to him and said, Simon, son of John, where are you going? He says, well, I'm fleeing Rome. And, and uh, he turns around, Jesus turns around and begins to walk. Or actually, no, Peter's this way. 
Jesus walks this way, and Peter turns around and says, Lord, where are you going? And he said, I'm going to Rome to be crucified again. Follow me. And Peter turns around, and then, of course, it's no longer the Lord walking, but Peter walking with the Lord in him. And together, they go to Rome. They are to be crucified again. What a story. What a love story. And it's very similar, maybe not as dramatic, but very similar to your story with God and mine. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And now our precious Apostles' Creed, we say together fervently, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he arose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. God's ways are sometimes hard to understand, but in the risen Christ, we see the God who cares for us and welcomes the petitions we now make in prayer. For the church, that the faithful will deepen their participation in and understanding of the liturgy, appreciating it as the place where the Lord's sheep are fed, we pray to the Lord. For peace in our world, that all people may live free from war and violence, that they may live in safety and security, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all people we meet in our daily lives, that we may recognize and serve Christ in each other and hear God speaking in the voice of both friends and strangers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For our own families, that the power of the resurrection may bring new opportunities for healing, growth, and reconciliation within our homes. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of Russia and Ukraine and all nations affected by war, that peace will spring forth and put down deep roots, and that new hope will flower. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for ourselves, that we follow Jesus with our lives being a living witness to the resurrection of Jesus and to the gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died marked with the sign of faith, may they be reborn to eternal life. For our loved ones, for the sick and the homebound, the military, law enforcement personnel, and all first responders. And we remember most especially all those for whom we have promised to pray. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God and Father, we stand in awe of your great power. Look kindly on your people in this church and grant our humble petitions. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become the bread of life. Blessed Blessed be God forever. forever. 
by the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good good and the good of all his holy church. Church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings from your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Frank, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Our Father who art, who art in, heaven, in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus, you said to the apostles, I leave you peace. My peace is my gift to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. We offer to each other now a sign of love and peace. If you are praying with us in solitude this day, let's pause for a moment and pray for the peace of all the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
My Jesus, I believe that you are in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. In the breaking of the bread, we knew him, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Before our final blessing, we all most humbly thank you for partnering with us every time you hit the like button. Thank you for taking the time to do that. And uh, beware always that you can hit the share button and send this message to anyone who you think need it. You can send it by way of a message. You can send it by way of a link. You can send it to an email address. You can post it on Facebook. You can do whatever you like with this telecast of the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. And finally, thanks all of you who so generously Give us encouragement by your words, your comments, and your donations. They help keep the production values alive and uh, as beautifully as they're done. So with that, dear friends, the Lord be with you. And with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Our celebration of the Eucharist is now finished. We go forth in peace 
and in joy to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Have a beautiful rest of the week, everyone. By God's grace, we'll see you next Sunday. What hope we have